Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. What's your best moment? I've messed with the wrong person? Episode 7 One time in Japan, an Australian guy met a group of German guys at his hotel. They chatted and got along, and then one of the Germans suggested going to Rapanji, strip clubs, and other seedy things. They all had a few and thought this was a marvelous idea. They wandered into the fanciest-looking joint they found and sat on some amazingly comfortable couches and had a tray of drinks brought out to them on the house for all first-time foreigners. It was a genuinely nice, fruity cocktail. After about 10 minutes of watching incredible dancers on the stage, and ordering some more drinks, the Australian complained he was feeling dodgy. Some of the Germans agreed that they too didn't feel right. Suddenly, the Australian proclaims that he feels numb around his mouth and a bit trippy, like doing a little bit of acid. They all decide to leave. As they leave the club, they are presented with a bill for approximate $50,000 US equivalent, which they feel is weird for three rounds of five drinks, one of which was supposedly complimentary. The Australian says quite loudly that he will not pay that kind of such bill and that if they bring him a more reasonable one, he will pay it. The host claims that is their bill and they must pay it. The Germans take out their wallets and hand over approximate $300 US equivalent in cash to the host saying they didn't have any more on them and it should cover what they drank. They all then walked out of the club, kind of. It turns out there were two doors next to each other. One led to the main road, one to the alleyway. When they got out on the alleyway, they were surrounded by a dozen or so large Nigerian men who demanded their wallets, passports, and jewelry. The German group decided to hand over their wallets and claimed not to have their passports. They were allowed to leave and began to walk away. The Australian got very agitated. At this point, one of the Nigerian men threw a punch and scored a bone-shattering direct hit with his hook on the Aussie's jaw. This seemed to trigger the Australian who would later inform the Germans, who are watching from down the alleyway at this point, that he never hits first, but he does love a good fight. The Australian then proceeds to grab of the Nigerians by the neck and slam his face into the brick wall. He immediately crumples into a pile on the floor. At this point, several of the Nigerians move in together and start throwing punches that are clearly landing on the Aussie. In the mess that followed, nobody was too sure what happened. Until they see that the Nigerians are now using a taser on the Aussie, who is still refusing to fall down. He is now covered in blood all over his face and appears to have it in his mouth as well. Eventually, one of the Nigerians hits him with a baseball bat. A van pulls into the street and they bundle him into it. The Germans see the Nigerians drag five of their own guys into the bar unconscious and another one screaming when they try to move him. The Australian wakes up naked in an open-air drain about four hours' drive by taxi from his hotel, which was only five minutes from the area the club was in. Manages to find a taxi driver who will take him back to his hotel and let him run up to grab the money from the room. As he walks naked into the lobby and requests a new hotel, Key the clerk looks shocked. But not as shocked as the Germans who are trying to give a report to a police officer in the lounge. The Aussie says, I think I got into a scrap, but it's okay, gets his key card and walks up to his hotel room, throws on a robe, comes down to pay the cabbie, gives him a huge tip, and then goes and has a shower. The police want to speak to the Aussie when he comes down a few hours later to head out for lunch. He explains that he doesn't remember anything other than that he was probably drugged and couldn't possibly pick out the bar again. The police inform him that several known criminals were brought into the hospital last night with severe injuries and that they would likely have proper Japanese lawyers if it were settled in court. They suggested that he stay in his hotel room as he is not allowed to walk around Tokyo without his passport, which he clearly no longer had, and that if he promised not to pursue the matter, the police may be able to speak to some people about smoothing it over. The Australian later had an extremely attractive woman bring him his passport to his room. It had blood on it. The woman said that he should stay out of Rapanji and ended up sleeping with him, which he thought was pretty awesome. He then proceeded with his holiday and two days later was in Kyoto. I've got two, one about my great-grandfather and another about my close friend back when we were in seventh grade. I never personally knew my great-grandpa. There's a picture of him holding me when I was really young, but anyhow, he used to be a minor 
and then went to work in a shipyard. From what I've heard, he was a big guy with a short temper and no tolerance for such things. One day, Dad and Gramps were taking a drive, my dad being about nine at the time. I guess some guy my grandpa knew was on the side of the road drunk and needed a ride, so grandpa being who he is gave him a lift. Now, my great-grandparents lived up in the northern area of California, western North America for anyone not from here. At this time, so, neighborhoods were in the midst of trees and people were separated by a few miles slash km. Anyhow, this guy is in my grandfather's car and my dad is in the middle between grandpa and the guy. Guy says something like, hey kid, you ever held slash seen a gun before? To my dad and pulled a pistol from his waistband. My grandfather slammed on the brakes, took the gun from Mr. Person and hits him over the head with it then pushes him out of the car and says, don't ever pull a gun on my grandson again or next time you won't be getting up. Next story, gonna keep it short. Typing on a phone is hard. So back in seventh grade, this weird kid would always push my friend's buttons, though it was funny. Until one day, the kid started credit card swiping my friend, essentially swiping your hand between someone's ass cheeks. Ick why you want to do that, but whatever, friend says stop, the kid does it two more times. Friend has enough, turns and punches him in the jaw, giving him in front of yard duty and about 15 other kids. Both go to the office. Kid gets suspended. I played football in high school and I'm a fairly big man. I don't much like confrontation, and I usually find myself being the mediator in bad situations. There was a kid that joined the team my sophomore year, and everyone knew he'd be a problem. He was constantly spouting off about how he had stolen 12 cars and how he had been arrested for his first assault on an officer at 9 years old, which none of us ever really knew if it was true. Later that year, it was his birthday, and someone on the team knew. So naturally, he was going to get his birthday licks in the weight room. I was standing by the pillar in the middle of the room when he walked in, and about 10 of the guys held him down on one of the benches and started to punch him. At one point, I heard three loud cracks and assumed someone had hit him in the face, which is a total violation of bro code. He then somehow shot up throwing elbows and shoving people away from him and suddenly stopped as he locked eyes on me. He walked right up to me and hit me in the face. It was like the air just went still and everyone was dead silent, waiting for my reaction. There was a confused pause at my end and I had to clarify to myself that I had just been hit. Then I went from calm to completely enraged. I hit him with a hard right cross that connected perfectly with his jaw. I had knocked him out standing up and hadn't realized it. To me, it looked as if he was rearing back to throwing a wild punch. This was also my first real fight, so I ducked and got behind him and grabbed him around his midsection. I was also a wrestler, so I knew what I was doing and lifted him up as high as I could and hip-tossed him directly onto his head. I think my coach called it a sky. I got on top of him and got maybe three to four good punches in before my coach grabbed a hold of me and tore me off of him. I went out into the hall to cool down and it dawned on me that I have issues with my anger. Afterwards, I felt pretty terrible about it. And we made amends. I see him around town every now and again and we're still friends today. I went to a high school near the Mexican border and an Indian reservation. This created all sorts of unique social and racial dynamics. Typically, in my high school, the Indians and Mexicans were at odds. There was this Indian who was renowned for being virtually Herculean, playing football. I remember him being eight feet tall. Anyway, one day, a few Mexicans apparently had some issue with him. For dudes, wannabe gang members, approach him to jump him. The only time I've ever seen what I saw that day since then was in a video game. In what seemed to be simultaneous motion, he drilled the first man in the jaw sending him sprawling. Almost at the same time, he grabs the second guy by what must have been his factory installed handles and tosses him back several feet on his head. The third man got a futile punch in before he got a hook to the temple and got knocked out cold. The fourth guy came around to approach from behind, between the Mexican toss and the knockout. He got an elbow to the face in what looked like someone created a blood grenade out of a person. The Mexican throw pillow got up and ran when he saw the carnage. The Indian turns, puts his backpack on, and nonchalantly walks to class with three dudes in a heap at his feet, and another running the fastest 40 of his life. Anyway, I said one man makes carnage of four punks who thought four dudes would be enough when they should have brought ten. My best friend and I go to a taco place after a night of drinking. Both 24 ex-college football players. Three 18-year-old kids in front of us in line were jerks to the cashier. My friend tells them to show some respect 
and quit being D-bags. They walk away, but we hear them say of those guys, we got numbers. When we walk out of the place, there are six or seven of these guys waiting on us. Friends and their leader have a verbal back and forth with neither standing down. Their leader has two guys sort of lined up to the right backing him up. My friend smiles, shakes his head, open hand slaps their leader, dropping him, winds up and backhands the next guy in line to the ground, winds up again and backhands the third guy. He had smiled because he thought of this slap technique. My friend saw one of the guys a week or two later, and the guy just complimented him on being a bad guy. Fight over a parking spot. 20-something versus a 60-plus old man. I'm on my lanai drinking my first coffee when I see two cars in the lot below me. One a beater, the other a soccer mom van. The beater cuts off the van, and a big kid and his GF step out. The old man in the van says something I can't hear, and the kid tells him to go away. The van door opens, and a fairly large 60-plus you. Guy steps out and starts toward the kid. I played around in enough dojos to recognize the flat-footed, wide stance way the old guy moved. I got a bad vibe. The old guy confronts the kid. The kid swings. The punch is blocked and the old guy has the back of his head gripped and plants the kid's face on the car in a second. The kid folds. The GF screams. The old guy walks back to the van. Fight over, right? Unless you're a dump site and can't keep your mouth shut. The kid stands up and says something about granddad's mother and the old guy slowly turns around. By this time, I'm looking for my phone to call 911, but I'm too slow. The old guy starts his stalking walk again, and the kid, to show he did have a brain cell or two left, keeps the car between them. But the old guy is relentless. He backed the kid into a corner of my building and gave the young man the most deliberate, methodical beating I've ever seen. I don't think the kid ever landed one punch. When the kid was unconscious, the old guy slowly walked back to the van and left. When the paramedics came 10 to 15 minutes later, the kid was still out. Lesson learned, don't mess with the old guys. You don't know what kind of skills they have. A story my dad once told me when he was in the RAF. He was living in Alice Springs sometime in the 80s. Late at night, he sees two blokes walking down the street while he's on duty somewhere, scruffy looking but all in all average. At the time, there was a lot of muggings and beatings going on at night by the local abos. So my dad counts at least 11 of them come out from some side road and see the two blokes and proceed to surround them and start shouting, threatening, what have you. Two guys just stood on their ground, went back to back, and got ready for a fight. By the end of it, all the abos were in the ground. Most of them ended up in hospital for every blunt force trauma you could think of. Turns out the two guys were SAS on break for two weeks, and they just walked off after they were done. My dad likes to add that it's not like these guys didn't take hits. They were bruised and bloody, but it didn't phase them, just left without a limp in their stride. Toughs are those blokes. I was the wrong person to mess with in this story. I'm not a violent person and would much rather settle my differences with people with my words instead of fists. I was at a friend's birthday party, and we had all been drinking and having an enjoyable time. The end of the night had come, which was about 4 a.m., and people were leaving. We were in a neighborhood, and this one man was pretty plastered and super paranoid about the police, who there were none around. Being sober, I tried to assure the guy that everything was fine, and there were no police. Before I could get the words, calm down, there's nothing to worry about, out of my mouth he yells, you want to talk? And then proceeds to cold clock me across the face. All I remember is yelling, you punch me in the face for nothing. Now I'm going to whoop your ass. I kind of blacked out and came to me on top of him punching him in the face and stopped myself before I put him in the hospital. He was about 6 feet 2 inches 220 and I'm 5 feet 8 inches 260. I guess he took my being a little hefty as weakness. He learned his lesson that day. When I was 16 to 17 years old, my four friends and I went to one of our local parks to smoke some weed in the woods. It's well known that this park is the place to go for that, so we frequently ran into other people doing the same thing. On this day, we happened to run into the guy whose girlfriend one of my friends took to prom. He couldn't go to prom with her himself because he had been suspended or expelled or something. This kid was a transfer student from Hawaii because I assume he got kicked out of every school in Hawaii. He walked, talked, and acted like an idiot, and he was one. He also walked, talked, and acted like a tough guy, but he wasn't. So, he sees my friend and decides to approach him and start talking about some stuff. 
I handed the bowl to someone else and stood up next to my friend, not acknowledging his BS trash talk. He asked me why I stood up, and I said, I'm backing my friend. He replies, what are you going to back, bro? And takes off his shirt. I just stood there staring him down, waiting for him to take the first shot so my friends and I could take him apart. Keep in mind this guy had three or four of his own friends behind him, but they weren't going to back him up. So, this guy talked about some more stuff, and then I guess he realized that if he tried to hit my friend, who took his girlfriend to a dance, my other friends and I would destroy him while his own friends watched. So, when he was finished running his mouth, he put his shirt back on and left. Man, I wish he had been dumbing enough to take a swing. That would have been hilarious. Well, I was a dumb teenager and said a your mom joke to a guy in my class. It was an innocent joke, but I hate those now, not because of what happened, but because they're not funny and they're stupid. He got really mad. He was mad for a good reason. I don't know who his parents are at all, but I think his reaction was a bit too much. Grabbed me and threw me down on the table. He was obviously upset. I think he threatened me. Needless to say, I was scared of him for a long time after that. I waited for the bus once, he came, and I went away because he told me to leave. That was scary. It took a while, but eventually we had a talk with the teacher who told me not to say those types of joke anymore. Believe me, I realized before, and I think that was one of the incredible few times I did say your mom joke ever in my lifetime, and the other kid to not threaten me. Yes, that was scary. I can't remember telling my parents. I can't remember. No, I think they knew actually. I can't remember. Either way, there was prom, and he has his arm around my shoulder. We look like the best of friends, while we stand with some other guys. I wasn't a member of any gang, so they weren't my best friends ever. At that point, however, I didn't have many friends. Well, I got a couple of stories. Let's start with the ones in which I am the wrong person to mess with. My parents own a bar in my hometown. One of those places that could come straight out of a detective story. All brown dark and with rugs on the tables. At the time, I believe it was a Monday night, I was sitting at the games slash newspaper table playing poker with some friends and patrons. Overall, we were six of us just happily playing, drinking, and having fun. Now, since it was a Monday night, things were slow, and there were only three other patrons in the bar, most of which either watching the game or playing the slot machines. About halfway into the poker game, enter the douche. Now, this guy was your typical loser. Skinny, wannabe badass biker, which had not worked an honest day in his life except to keep his benefits. Now I have known this guy for around 10 odd years at that time, and except for the occasional verbal abuse, never had too much trouble with him. Especially as at the time, I was 6 foot 1 and 242 pounds of fit muscular male bravado, 187M, 110 kilograms. So, this guy ordered a beer and moved up to watch the game. The first thing he does is position himself directly behind me and ask him to see my cards. Since we were playing for cash, I politely told him I would rather not and ask him not to interrupt the game. He acquiesces, but after a couple of minutes, he moves up to me and grabs a stack of my tokens. And to add insult to an already infuriating move, he starts rattling them just behind my left ear, letting slide the stack from one hand into the other before reversing the action. Now. Being in my parents' bar in which I worked at the time as a bartender or bouncer at the time, I decided to play it nice. No use fighting where you work if you can avoid it. I asked him for my stack of tokens back and refrained from tearing his head off. After a bit of back and forth, he places them on the table and promptly proceeds to grab a stack of coins from his pocket and resume the rattling of the coins behind my right ear. Immediately, I asked him to stop and politely go away. His response was the crowd favorite, or what? Instead of verbally responding, I slowly get up and proceed with a right straight to his face. While my swing is underway, I think this kind of do not want the hassle of explaining to the cops why he is in the hospital when he did not attack me. And at the last moment, I change it to a push. He landed about three meters, nine feet, and started squealing, so I attacked him. Promptly, one of the regulars comes up and stops me from advancing on the little prick. While another moves up to his sister wannabe and tells him this. If Ether Freeth wanted to hurt, you would not be talking right now. So, I suggest you go away quickly before he changes his mind. Time for the second story. This is about six months after the first. It was Saturday night. My father and I were working at the bar with a band playing and many of people in the house. Just after closing time, 
we decided we could accommodate the guests a bit longer without attracting the ire of the police. We know most of them. Regardless, after about 45 minutes, most people left. Suddenly, we heard a rap on the window. Since we are two, my father has decided to go to the door and see who it is. After a minute or two, he comes back. Suddenly, there is another rap on the window, and he tells me he might need some backup. Being really tired after working 11 hours straight, I don't even bother to ask what is up, and just fall into the door. We open up, and there is this black kid, I'm guessing early 20s. I am a mixed heritage, so no racism there, with this rather young-looking Caucasian girl. The kid starts demanding cigarettes. We tell him we are closed and just seeing the last of our patrons off, so it's no go. He starts threatening to throw a brick through our windows if we do not sell him his smoke. At that point, I opened the door completely and stepped out with my father in tow. Same height and build approximately as me, but a bit heavier and 30-odd years the elderly. To give us some space to move if necessary. Right as we move out, the kid attempts a swing at my father, which I promptly intercept and use to lock up his arm and face plant him on the boardwalk. Meanwhile, my father, after assuring I got things under control, moves back in to call the police officers. Meanwhile, I soften him up a bit, so he is nice and docile for the police officers. After about 10 minutes, the police arrive, and I switch to an arm bar so they do not get the idea I am using undue force. After some explanation from my side and my father, they decided to throw everything they got at the kid, including the kitchen sink, and soften him up a bit more before taking him away. And last, but not least, one in which I am dealing with the wrong guy. So, one night I was walking through my neighborhood, and I saw a guy being molested by two other guys. I decided to be a hero and try and help the guy. Soon as I get close and start interfering, the lead guy doing the molesting pulls out a gun and puts it on my face. While I am looking into this guy's eyes and see not a shred of mercy or doubt the other guy I was trying to help bolts. Thanks friend, you are welcome. Needless to say, I turned myself into the sweetest friend that the guy holding the gun could have. After which they let me go and went after the other guy again. I was fortunate enough to be the person not to be messed with. Guy approached and was talking to my girlfriend while I'm sitting a couple of feet away talking to my friends. He apparently had no idea who I was as he was blatantly hitting on her after she had told the guy that she was taken. He starts to ask where I am and starts to tell her not to worry. He'll take care of me and she won't have to worry. My friends and I have been overhearing, but I find it sort of funny, but figure it's getting to the worst point. She apparently thinks the same thing and says she'll introduce us and he can explain to me what he's just said to her. He says that he'd love the opportunity to say it to my face. Well, I proceeded to calmly stand up, walk over, and lift him onto the wall. As he's suspended there, I said something like, It's been wonderful overhearing the conversation, but I think we'll both agree that it's probably best if you take off. Well, I suppose there was that time when someone driving by called me a baddie boy. I wasn't bothered about being called gay, but I was upset with that, and so I launched a half-eaten salt beef bagel at the car, and I got it right in the face. The look on his face as hot salt beef and mustard made contact with his cheek was priceless. I can only describe it as complete shock. The car stopped, he jumped out and came toward me as if to fight me, so I smacked him in the face. Unfortunately, that car was in a convoy of two. Both are full. I got fearless when four lads jumped out of the second one and attacked me from behind. I should have just taken the insult, but alcohol intervened. To make matters worse, I wasted a perfectly good bagel. Still, I probably managed to break his dad's car interior up, and he probably had some explanation to do. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.